Today. Okay, now, before we do this question, before we do that question, let's look at this moment of the force. Moment of the force is the turning effect of a perpendicular. Turning effect of a perpendicular force at a fixed point. If we have a beam and the beam is fixed at a certain point, then you apply a force. Remember, a force has magnitude and it has direction. Let's say we apply a force at this point. This is a beam. This beam will spin at this point, at the fixed point. It will rotate in the, the anti-clockwise direction. This is our beam. The force pushes in that direction. This beam spins. What this force is doing at this fixed point, that's the moment of the force. The turning effect at that point. This force should be perpendicular at 90 degrees. Okay. If the force is not at 90, if the force is not at 90, if the force is at a big force, let's say the force is somewhere at a certain angle, then they give you theta leg. This is your force. You take the adjusted side of that force, right? Force F as a force, cos or side. At this point, you should be able to just look at the force and figure out whether it's cos or side because you've been practicing. This is adjacent, this is the hypotenuse, you have theta. So, Katoa, you are using cos. So, this is the one that is causing a turning effect, not this force. The perpendicular force, the one that is at 90 degrees. Okay. Moment of the force you will be calculating. Moment is equal to the force times the distance to the turning point. I'll use R. The distance from where the force is to the turning point. That distance. Okay. I'll use R because if this thing was to rotate to make a circle, and that circle will be the radius of this. Other books they will use S, then it's still the same thing. Whether they use R or S, it's still the same thing. What matters is the units. Units for force is what? Newtons. Units for distance of displacement is what? M, meters. Which means the unit for moment of a force is what? Newton, meters. Okay, Newton, meters. That is our unit for moment of the force. If you have questions, you, you ask. Always make sure the force is perpendicular. Whether they give you a question like this, now uh, let me try and draw something. This is our beam. This is our fixed point. It's not even a beam, this one, but it's something. We have the force. Let me use numbers now. Let's say we have 12 newtons. The distance up to this point is 10 centimeters. The distance from that point to that point is also 10 centimeters. 
then they ask you what is the moment of this guy. It's not as straight, it is not as straight as this. You don't panic. What you do is, it, it is forming like an arm, isn't it? It is making a corner here. What you do is, you straight out this corner, it becomes a straight line. You yeah, are up to this point, that's 10. From this point to that point, 10 centimeters. This is our turning point. From this point to that point, it's also what? 10. This part, where is the force acting? The force is acting at 90 degrees. So we have our 12 newtons. So we have the distance 10 plus 10. Now these are centimeters. The moment that this force is causing is equal to the force times R. I like this in R, but S is also fine. 12 times this plus that, that's 20, right? So now it's 20 centimeters. Cent is times 10 to the power minus. That will be your answer in this So no need to panic whether they give you something like an, an arm, you just stretch it out, you make it straight. Then you calculate moment of the force. Always make sure it is in newtons. The force is in newtons, the distance is in meters. But sometimes you may even find your answer as kilo newton meters. But the meters always remains meters. Only what the kilo may change. I may use kilonewtons here, but that's of the kilonewton meters. I hope we, we remember our prefix kilonewtons and uh, centimeters converted all those values. Okay. In order for this beam to remain balanced, it means it should not go anywhere. Okay? This moment of the force is turning anticlockwise. But they won't ask you to, to give the direction of rotation. But we just need this to know that this will spin anticlockwise. Somebody got to point point for me that. So it is spinning anticlockwise. But in order for this beam to remain balanced, it means there has to be another neutral meter of 2.4, but in the clockwise. 2.4 anticlockwise, there should be another 2.4 clockwise. So let's say if I apply another force here. Let me use the force there. I have the mark. If I apply a force, and this force has a value of 24 meters. So now this one is causing anticlockwise, right? If I multiply, if I calculate the moment of this force, if I multiply the moment of this force, moment is equal to the force itself times R. I have 24 times 10, the distance from there to the turning point, centimeters. This will take me to 2.4 newton meters, right? So, but this force is what? It's now clockwise. It is turning clockwise because of this. This It will spin the beam clockwise. Then the, what we have achieved is that this beam will not spin in, in any direction. It is now balanced. Even though the forces are different, this one is 24, the, this one is 24, the other one is 12, but 
they both are causing the turning effect to be equal. They both have the same magnitude of the turning effect. This beam will not go anywhere. What you have done is a question. So what if I don't use that exponent negative 2 and I just convert it alone? It's fine. Yeah. I'm just, I just like that. Okay. Yeah. So what if I use that exponent negative 2 and I just convert it alone? It's fine. Yeah. I'm just like that. It looks complicated. <laughs> okay, so in other words, what we have done, we have balanced out this force and we have stated this law of moment for a beam to remain balanced or in equilibrium to remain balanced the sum of V clockwise moments should be equal to Sum of V anti clockwise, anti clockwise or counter clockwise, depending on what you prefer. Counter clockwise moment, not the forces. Please, when you define this, talk about moments. I did not say force there, it's moments. The forces are different when we look at this example, the forces are different. This one is 12, the other one is 24, but the beam is still balanced. Because if I multiply 12 times 20 centimeters, I still get 2.4. If I multiply 2.4 by 10, I still get 2.4. 24 by 10, I still get 2.4. The moments are the same. Whether clockwise or anti-clockwise, this beam remains balanced. That's the law of moments. Right there. Makes sense. That's what you'll be doing throughout our calculation. Okay, just a quick example. Just keep in mind that where I put the star, it means that's our turning point. Okay, we have our turning point here. We have a force 100 newton. And they ask us how much force should be applied at X in order for this beam to remain balanced. Remember, like I said, this is our fixed point. A fixed point can also be called a pivot where the object is turning, or they might call it a fulcrum. It's the same thing. As long as we know that that's where it is turning at that point. Okay? We have 100 newtons, we have 17 newtons, we have X. Then they say, how much force should we apply here so that it balances out? But according to this, what we have said is that the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise. What we have just said in mathematics will look like the sum of clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moments. What we have just said will look like this. The summation of the clockwise should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment. Okay. So what you do, you start identifying those forces. Remember X is a force. We don't know how much it is. So you start asking yourself, if I've got 100 and this is my turning point and 100 pushes in this direction, this beam will rotate in that direction. Is this clockwise or anti-clockwise? When it spins like that, yeah. The same direction, the clock rotates. This will belong to the clockwise. When we go to the 17, 
17 is pushing in that direction. Keep in mind your arrows to spin in that direction. You see this one is what? No fight. When you look at X, we don't know the value of X. But at least we know the direction. When X pushes in this direction, this will be which direction? That's right. That's right. Then you take this to our formula. Those that are clockwise will be on this side of the equation. This one which is at clockwise will be on the other side of the equation. Now, which one are we starting with? 100. 100 multiplied by the distance to the turning point, which is already given, it's a 2. So 100 by 2. This, I'll close it in brackets, because this is one moment. It is a moment caused by 100. Then what we are saying is that the sum we add to the other moment, the other more clockwise moment is the 17, times how much? times 5. So the distance from here all the way up to the turning point. Always up to the turning point. So in this case it's 2 plus 3, that's a 5. We close this. In, uh, the clockwise moments are finished. If there were others, we keep adding. If there were some other clockwise moments, we keep adding. Then we say equals our anti-clockwise is only x times the distance, which is a 3. So you multiply this by 3, this is also a moment, but we don't know the value of that. 100 times 200, yeah, 5 times 17, you get how much? 85 is equal to 3x, 85 plus that you get 285 is equal to 3x divided by 3, you get 95. Now this x, this x is not newton meters, it's just newtons, because x is just a force, it's not the moment. If I multiply 95 by x by, by, by 3, that's when I'll get newton meters, I hope we get that. What we are calculating for is a force. Even though we are using what the law of moments, but we are calculating for a force. Also, it is not always that they will ask you for a force, they may even ask you for the distance. You still use this. They might give you the force. We are calculating for the, the distance. The unknown will still be out of there, but the, the calculations will give you a correct answer. Any questions? Okay. That is simple. That is simple. This is what we are going to be doing. Now, all these forces that we have looked at for now, these forces, the 95, and all those, those are direct forces. Those are direct forces. On point loads. All those, the 100, the 17, even the X, the one we found out to be 95, that is a all point load, or they might call it a concentrated load. Load is just something that is pushing down. This is the same thing. It's a load acting on one point. Is only acting at exactly that point where it is indicated. It's a concentrated load or an on point load. Then you will have loads of forces going downwards, which are called uniformly distributed loads. Okay, or they might say evenly distributed. It's 
same thing depending on what they give us. The reason why I'm giving you these things is that sometimes a theme might be given in terms of just a paragraph. They are describing, then they'll say, at two meters we have got a concentrated load of so much. So you know that this one should only act at one point. Maybe they'll say, from this point to that point we have a even, even a distributed load. So you know what really is happening. This, it's the same thing again. This is acting across a distance. Acting across a distance of the beam. Okay, it is evenly distributed as the as the name describes. It is distributed even equal across a distance. This one they'll give us, they won't just give you as Newtons, they'll say maybe five newtons per meter. Okay, so one meter is five newtons, another meter is five newtons, another meter is five newtons. So it will be distributed at this five newtons per one meter. So if they tell us that a beam, they would represent it like this, something like that, to show that it is distributed. Maybe this from this point to that point. Seven meters. Then they say this is five meters per meter. Okay. One meter is five. Another meter is five. Another meter is five. Another meter is five. Another meter is five. Until seven meters. Okay. When we calculate, when we calculate, which we will start with, please turn these for calculations. Turn these guys into a point load into one load. How do you do that? You take this five meters, you multiply by the distance where it is acting, which which would be what seven. We get how much? Thirty-five newtons. Now this thirty-five newtons should be applied as a concentrated load, as one load. It should be applied at the center of seven at half of seven you multiply the five meters per meter then apply your, your your total at the half mark of the uniformly distributed load which means if we were to calculate in our calculations this seven will be you divide your seven into 3.5 you apply your five meters there this side it will be 3.5 and on this side it will also be 3.5 meters half of 7 is 3.5 okay then during your calculations you'll be working with 35 and exactly what 3.5 any question simple stuff simple stuff
they say it is four kilometers. So your supports are D and A. How do we calculate for the reactions? Number one, remove your uniformly distributed loads. Okay. Number one, remove these uniformly distributed loads. Make them one load. So we start with this. The distance where it is acting is only six meters, only six meters. You say six or four times six, you get how much? 24 kilonewtons, this is kilonewtons. This 24 kilonewtons should go at half of that distance. Half of six is how much? It's three. Are we together? I hope I'm not missing one. I will mess up this diagram for now, for our calculations. So, for my calculations, I forget about that. I deal with what? One force. Okay, let me use a different marker for this. Because this force, this 24, does not really exist on our original diagram. But we need it for us to get the correct calculations. Okay. When we come to the shear force diagram, we'll bring back the way it was. Okay. We go again to this side. On this side, we have 4 kilonewtons times the distance, which is 2, gives us how much? 80. Half of 2 is 1. So I will need to apply 8 somewhere. 8. Yeah. One meter this side and one meter this side. Here it is three meters. Three 
नहीं है based on a so if we start with this 24 24 is pushing in that direction is 24 a clockwise or anti clockwise clockwise okay so this guy is clockwise is this 10 a clockwise or anti clockwise okay 6 clockwise or anti clockwise this d clockwise or anti clockwise This eight clockwise or anti-clockwise? The five? Clockwise. Okay. So it's a simple calculation. Or the clockwise will be on this side. The anti-clockwise, fortunately, we only have one. It will be on this side. Okay, so we start. I like to start. This is my turning point. I like to start with the closest force to my turning point, then I move out. But it is up to you. You can even start with this. As long as the distance is to this point, everything we are multiplying all the way up to this point, okay? But I like to start from this side going outward. It's up to you. So I'll start with the 24 times how much? Three. Okay. You close. This is one moment. You add to another moment. I'll go to the 10 times six. I'll go to the six. This six kilonewtons times eight, which is two plus six okay. times eight. Then I will add to this eight times how much? Twelve. One. Up to here. From eight up to here. Eleven. You agree? Eleven. Six plus two. Plus two, plus two, one, eleven. Okay. So those distances, if you miss just one distance, your calculations are wrong. So always open your eyes and see those distances. We have this last one. Five times from here up to there. Twelve. We close. We finish the clockwise. 
all, all these are just for this time. We solve for this guy. We equate. Fortunately, it is only one t times the distance from d all the way up to here. Okay. Yeah. There is no, it's just point eight. Yeah. The next calculation, you bring back A as a support. This T goes out, it becomes a turning point. You are taking moments at D. There's two point eight, that's fine. And you're doing a calculation based at our new turning point. Now, our new turning point, our turning point is now D, which means even those ones have changed, others they may not change, but in this case we need to re-identify them depending on our new turning point. So we look at our turning point, let me start with this, this two on this side. If this is our turning point, eight pushes in that direction, what rotation is 8 causing? It's a clockwise. Okay, so this 8 is still working clockwise. The 5 on this side is also clockwise. Okay, so nothing changed with this 2. When I go to this 6, 6 is pushing in the downwards. This will be one direction. Okay, so this is anti clockwise. What about the, this 10? Anti clockwise. What about this 24? And A, this one is a clockwise. Okay, the clockwise will belong to this side, the anti clockwise will belong to the other side. Okay. Our clockwise, let me start with A. A times how much? We have three. Plus 8 times how much? Eight times three. Eight times one. The distance eight is here. We are coming. It's one. Eight times one. I hope you see that. Okay. Plus that five times how much? Two times two. Is there any other clockwise? Okay, so we are fine there. This was two. We go to the anti clockwise. Like I said, I always like starting from the one closest to this. I'll start with the six. Six times plus ten times. Okay, plus twenty-four times. Twenty-four times ten. Okay. This 
that is 20 comma 2. This one we said was how much 30? 32 comma 8. 32 comma 8. Those are the reactions. Is it fine? If we are fine, then we are good to go. Now, if you are calculating, you get your reactions, you have this, you have this, you can prove your answer, you can test yourself to say these forces are going downwards, these are the only ones going upwards, they should balance out each other. Which means if I add, now here you're just trying to prove yourself, if I add the forces that are going upwards, should be equal to the sum of the forces going down. You're just trying to prove yourself. Sometimes they do ask proof or test your answer. But it is not always that they ask for you to test your answer. So what we what we say is that this that are going upwards we have 20.2 plus 32.8 should give us 24 plus 10 plus 6 plus 8 plus 5. We get 53. 53. We have tested, we have proved our arm. We are almost on the right track. You can move on to the next question in your exam. Okay. If it fails to prove, then somewhere in your calculations you, you missed maybe a distance somewhere. If you have the time, you can go and check and find where you made a mistake and so on. But if there is no time, you we'll move on to the next question. Okay. If it fails to prove, but if it proves, that's fine. And if it proves like this, you can go answer other questions, come back to the shear force diagram. Okay, let's do a shear force diagram. Let's do a shear force diagram. A shear force diagram can only be correct if these two are correct. If they are wrong, your shear force diagram wants to be wrong. So if you fail to prove here, there's no point of going to the shear force diagram. Okay. It is only correct when these reactions are correct. Basically, what we are saying is if these forces go downwards, this should react, this point T should react exactly at this. This A should react at this. That's why they call them reactions. They're just reacting to what is going downwards. The chairs, when you sit on them, the legs of the chair should react at exactly a certain amount. If the chair does not react with a certain amount, then it should collapse, you should fall down when you sit on that chair. If the chair reacts with a lot of force, then it means the chair should lift you up. But it should react with exactly the same amount as the amount that you're pushing downwards. That is Newton's state law. Okay. When we draw a shear force diagram, You need pencils and rulers. But before you draw a shear force diagram, a shear force diagram is a vector. Remember, forces are vectors. It's a vector representation of all the forces or loads, if you want, acting on the beam so which means we should draw a line that represents 20 comma 2 we should draw a line that represents this 24 that 10 and so on the size or the length of the line remember vector which has got magnitude and direction the direction is going up the size is 20.2 so the length of that line should represent this. So the length of the line that will represent 20.2 will not be the same length as the force for that represents 10. The length that the line that represents 10 will not be the same length as this one. Okay, so each line or each force has got each own space for the distance of that line. Now we are drawing lines, which means your rulers does not have kilometers. What your ruler has is centimeters. Your ruler has centimeters. What you're doing on your paper 
is centimeters. So before you draw, what you will need is you need to create a scale. They'll ask you using a suitable scale, your own scale, to draw the shape of stagger. What you will say is that I have my kilonewtons on this side representing one centimeter. Don't write this one first. What this means is that if I've got five kilonewtons on my paper, I will draw five centimeters. Okay, now, before you can adopt a scale, you look at the, the biggest force. I've got 32. Will I manage to draw 32 centimeters on my page? It won't match. Actually, this is the biggest. 32 will not match on my page. So what we do is, we increase the value here. When I need to draw this 5, I will divide it by my scale. 5 divided by 2 to give me 2.5, right? I will draw a line for 2.5, which is 5. But then when I go to the biggest value here, 32.8 divided by 2 gives you 16.4. Okay, how are, are you ready to draw a line that is 16.4? I see this one is not in 16.4. Yes, yes. Okay, if you are not ready, you increase this value again. If you take it to 3, let's use 4. Okay. Life may be easy. Let's use 4. Do we agree? Now, when you are choosing, don't choose something that will make your diagram too small. So let's take it to Okay, anyone, you can use four. For today's sake, for today's sake, let me use two. I need a big diagram. Now, your diagram is going to be a bit big. I uh, will draw this to be about 12 centimeters. Okay, it can still fit on our page. For today, Let's draw a big diagram. As you practice, you can even draw something that is tiny. Okay, it's fine. Then the length, also the length, we need to represent the length of the beam. The beam is a total of 12 meters. Your page cannot draw 12 meters. So what we will say is that one meter on our page is represented by one centimeter. Okay, which means since this is 12, you draw a line 12 centimeters. This one is, is easy. And you only draw it once. Where would we keep it dividing it on this side? Okay? Okay, I'm fine. Once you establish, every time you draw the shear force diagram, make sure your scale is on that side to show that this is the scale that you use. Somebody can use a different scale, but the diagram will be the same. Only the size. The scale only represents the size. It does not change the data. It only represents the size. Now, please leave enough. Let's imagine this is our page, right? Your page. Leave enough room above. Leave enough room below. I will start from the center. The first thing, we will draw the whole beam. The length of the beam, according to our scale, the length of the beam should be 12 centimeters. On our page, now, my diagram is a free diagram, free hand diagram. Yours should be exactly 12 centimeters. Enough space above, enough space above, enough space below because we'll be going up, going down, going up, going down. Twelve centimeters. This will be your equilibrium line, your zero line. Then, before you do anything, please divide this line into those points A, B, C, D, of E, and A are, are at the end. But what I need is B, so six centimeters, somewhere B. Just mark, you don't need to name it B. If you want, you can name it B. Then uh, from B to C is two meters. From C to D is another two meters. Okay, somewhere there. Okay, just mark those ones, those points. Like 
I say this is our zero line. Oh my, my camera can catch these lines. Okay, we done that. Then you start representing your process. Okay, now before we start, let's take back our uniform and distributed load. Remember what I said about this 24? That this 24 is not really there. This was 4 kilonewtons per meter. In total we got that 24 kilonewtons. This one was, was also 4 kilonewtons per meter. Then we got the total of 8. Right? So when we start drawing, we are not going to deal with that 24 at the center. We will deal with it. Uh, you will see how we will deal with that. Okay, so the same way we, we write, when you are writing something, we start from the left side to go to the right, isn't it? So even with this shear force diagram, you start with the force that is on the left. Then you go force by force by force until you reach the last force. In this diagram, there is a force at the left end. If there is no force, you leave it. You go and start where the force is. If there was no force yet, maybe the force that started was starting at B, will start at B. Okay? In this diagram, there is a force at A. There should be a line here at A, representing this 20, going way upward. Okay, so what you do is 20 divided by your scale. So we have 20.2 divided by your scale 10, 1 centimeters. A line going upwards 10, 1 centimeters. So it is 10 centimeters with 1 millimeter. You draw a line straight upwards. you draw a line straight upwards, 10,1. That's why I said enough space above, enough space below. 10,1 centimeters. 10,1 centimeters. Try to be as accurate as possible. This, this line and your horizontal line should be at 90 degrees. It shouldn't be slanting this side or slanting that side. Try as much as possible to make it 90 degrees. Okay? You don't write your 10,1 there, though. No. What you write is the value of that point. The value of that point will give it 20.2 kilometers. The 10,1 was just for us to draw. But what we have represented is the 20.2. Fine. Okay, so we are done with A. From A, we have to move up until B. But the more that I move, let's say I move one meter, this beam becomes heavy by four. Remember, it's four per meter. If I move one meter, it becomes it pushes me down by four. I move another meter, now it's four plus four, it's now eight. I move another meter, another meter. By the time I reach the end, this beam would have been heavy by 24. So now, this 24, when it comes to the beam, we are not going to apply it at the center, no. We are going to apply this 24 at the end of this 6 meters. I hope that makes sense. In our calculations, we apply the 24 at the center. In our beam, you should apply the 24 after 6 meters after 6 meters because if you only move half you have only covered 3 meters which means it's 3 times 4 it's 12 only when you move 6 meters that's when, you have, that's when you have covered 24 only when you move 6 meters so what you do is for this one you will draw a dotted line or a faint line a dotted line or a faint line this is not our line that's why I've even used a different uh, color here. This is not our line, just a faint line. Those that are doing drawing, you know the difference. A 
same kind as the dotted line. This line should be six meters, six centimeters on this page, such that this point and that point they will correspond. Your B, your six meters at the end of that dotted line. That's where we will represent this twenty-four. That's where we will go down by twenty-four. So you go to your scale. You will say 24 divided by our scale. 24 divided by 2 is how much? It's 12, right? Centimeters. On your page, you will go downwards by 12 centimeters from this point, but a faint line again or a dotted line, 12 centimeters. That line, 12 centimeters. I know it will go below the zero line because at first we went 10 centimeters, now we have gone 12 centimeters, it will be below. Twelve centimeters where it reaches you. Now the diagrams are looking different for us. Are you using different scales? We went down by 24. When you go down, it's a minus. 20.2 minus 24 is how much? want these values. So this will go to negative 3.8 kilonewtons. Don't wait until you draw everything and give values. As you are drawing, give values. It will be much faster. You can do this on the side. On the, even in the question paper, it's still fine. They won't ask you to show this. But like I said, you need to be fast. All of this should be happening within five minutes. You are done. Just go today. Okay, are we fine with the uniformly distributed load? Okay, <clears throat> what that means, we have arrived at point B. After arriving at point B, the beam is getting heavy. The, the more we move to the right, the beam is getting heavy. Now we have arrived at point B. There is a force at point B. And that force is a concentrated force. This force goes straight downwards. It's a point load. These ones are easy. They are point loads, even this guy, where you need to work out the uniformly distributed load. So we'll check this. We'll go downwards according to our scale, which will be 5. You divide 10 divided by your scale, you get 5 centimeters. You go downwards from this point. 
Here now, there's more dotted light, just go straight downwards, five centimeters. I don't know where it ends you. But from this, not from the zero light, from where you ended at the negative three point eight, go five centimeters downwards. Five centimeters downwards. Draw the correct one. 
Okay, is it fine? So we are at this point C. We have we are done with point C. We move on from point C. We go to point D. Again, there is no activity in between there. So it will be a straight line, horizontal. Just make sure this this line is two meters, two centimeters, which means it will correspond to that point. You don't need to give this a new value because it's still the uh, negative 19.8 so you don't need to give it a value then it means you have arrived at point D we have arrived at point D point D is a force going upwards of this size 32.8 we take our 32.8 to our scale 32.8 divided by 2 gives you how much? 16.4 okay 16.4 centimeters please try to be as accurate as possible that 16.4 is possible on your ruler it is 16 centimeters with four of those small guys accuracy is the key because that will uh, be kind of drawing no one how one millimeter can cost you okay so you draw a line from this point, 16.4 centimeters. It will cross through that point. I don't know where it ends. May I see that correct value? So, please make sure this line from this, from the negative part from below, when you measure from this point up to where it ends, it should be 16.4. Accuracy is the key. So we give that point a value, we go to this value guide. We went upwards by how much? 32.8. So force is going upwards is plus. This gives us how much? 13. You name that guy 13. Because we are not going to apply this aid at the center, to apply the aid at the end. So again, it will be the issue of dotted lines. A dotted line from that point. Late. So can you just put this one outside? Yeah. You may. So the dotted line is only to represent yeah. this. Then at the end of the dotted line, that's where we will go by eight going downwards. Now you take your eight, you take it to the scale. On our scale, four centimeters, right? Going downwards. You guys, go downwards, four centimeters, dotted line again. I don't know where it ends. And make sure that that dotted line is 4 centimeters. Then you connect this point and that point with a straight line. I need a value for this. What's the value here? You were at 13, you went down by 8. Minus 
13 minus 8. Because we are at 13, we are going downwards, forces going downwards, that's a negative. So we are saying minus 5 minus 8 here, sir. Which gives you a 5. If you get a 5, you start smiling. Don't draw this in the exam. <laughs> okay. But at least you know that you're on the right track. Because when you look at this, the last force is how much? Five. Which means whatever we have done so far is correct. You've, got, you've scored all your marks. So what you do is, you, if you are to draw this last force, this last force, you take it to your scale. On our scale, the five, divided by 2 gives you how much? 2.5 centimeters. If your diagram is correct, all those correct points of paper, maybe you are correct. If you measure this size from that point, that point, it will be about this thing. That's my time. No more. Okay, are you getting 2.5? Exactly. That's it's big. Then your, your, your drawing is correct. If you are slightly off, it doesn't matter. If you are slightly off, maybe by two millimeters and so on, just just fix it. We are not doing engineering drawing. Okay. Uh, keep practicing.